What's up everybody, it's Simon from Leica. Today, we are spooling up a brand new reel with some fresh line. I'm gonna show you how to do it by yourself, even if you don't have a reel spooler. Here's everything you need. Of course, you need your new reel. You need some line. And one of these bad boys. That's right, a number two pencil. That's it. That is if you have some extra hands, if you have a helper, because they're gonna put this on the pencil and hold it and kind of push in a little bit, give it some friction. That's all you really need. That's all you really need. If you're by yourself, I'm gonna show you how to do it with a couple clamps. I also have a cutting apparatus. It could be a pocket knife or anything. You just need to snip the line when you're all done, right? That's it. As far as clamps go, any style. I'm going to put them on the edge of the counter. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. First, we're going to start by feeding this through our eyelets. This, I'm going with six pound test here. Uh, this is actually a micro light rod. It's kind of a full size micro light. So it's about six feet and it's a, it's a full size reel. It's a full size reel, but it's a it's a light action and it's a light rod. So we're gonna do six pounds, kind of an all purpose for uh, what we're gonna be using this rod for. So we'll start off by getting a length here and feeding it through the eyelets from the top. Uh, now you don't have to do this. You can go straight from your line your brand new line straight onto the reel. But I like to put it through the eyelets and there's a reason why. It's because I feel like the memory in the line doesn't get carried as, I feel like the, me the memory in the line, which is from sitting, you know, wound up on the shelf, uh, especially monofilament line, which is kind of your basic fishing line, is it, that memory is going to get transferred a little more directly unless you run it through the rod. So I like to put it through the eyelets because how your reel is going to be reeling it up on the line through the eyelets is how it's going to be happening when you're fishing. Uh, so the, the best thing to do if you have the, the, uh, the option is once you're spooled up, uh, if, if you have a boat, you can let all your line out and troll really slowly and all that memory, all the twisting and everything, uh, all the kind of looping, it'll all work itself out and straighten itself out in your wake. So that's really the best way to get rid of the memory in a uh, monofilament line. But if you don't have that option, um, when you're spooling up, I just recommend using the whole length of the rod if you can. So now that we have it fed through the eyelets, I'm just going to do a lasso right here on the end. I'm going to tie a lasso. So just a regular old fashioned overhand knot, something basic. All you're really trying to do is just put enough tension on there to get the spooling started. Got a little too much tag in there. I'm going to cut that off. Just want a little bit. A little bit's okay. All right, so now we're gonna loop this over the end, over the reel with the bail open, and just tight enough to get it started. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna hold this line tight with one hand. This is, this is where it gets tricky. You kinda wanna either wanna hold it tight enough or just loosen just a little bit. All you're trying to do is get it started. Okay, I got it started. So sometimes you might need to like hold that lasso on there while you start reeling a little bit. But now that we got it started, now I can kind of back up and get a little more on there. There we go. Feel good about that. And now we can rig up our contraption. Um, so what I want to do is uh, I'm going to step back and I'll be reeling it from this side. And so I want it to be coming up from the back side here just to kind of 
be more of a natural flow got my own reel I put my magic pencil through here and open up my clamp just can't clamp a little overkill for the situation but it'll work clamp the counter there I'm gonna use my other clamp to put a little bit of a little bit of pressure on it. Let's see if I can fit this through here. Oh yeah, there we go. So there's a little, just enough friction. You just want enough friction so it's not just free spooling and, and you don't want the line to be loose. You want the line to be tight while it's going on to your reel. And if you do that, you'll be fine. So we got a little tingle here. I'm gonna back it up. And I like to hold it kind of close to the eyelet. So I've got a nice tight, almost like a guitar string. I mean, really tight here. The tighter that it goes on to the reel, uh, the less likely you're gonna have, you know, kind of a rat's nest or, or any sort of kind of things going haywire when you first get to use it. Cause you can see there's a lot of loops. There's a lot of memory going on in this line here. So we're going to get started. I'm going to get started slowly, kind of work out these first, you see our reels, our uh, spool starting to spin there. I just kind of plant it into my hip, pull it with my hand, and now we can go nuts. Just going and going. I don't want to, I don't want to spool it all the way to the top be too full, but you want plenty of line on there. So if you hook something big and you need to work it, it's got plenty of, plenty of line to work with. We're almost there. A little over halfway there. Kind of stop and check here. So it's going on well. It's going on good. I don't see any, any problems, any kinks or any weird little loops or anything like that. So we're looking good. I'll get back to it. They make it, they make a device that, you know, holds the spool and everything like that. It makes it, you can actually mount your reel onto it and just go straight onto the, on there. And, uh, those are handy, but if I can do it with stuff I already have around the house, I'm going to do that. That's more of my speed. Alrighty. We are almost a, almost full here. I don't, you know, again, I don't want it to be overly full because you're more likely to have kind of a rat's nest or some kind of loop or tangle or something. And this one is for my son. So I think I'm gonna call it right there. So we're just gonna snip it off. If you're heading out, this would be a good opportunity to tie a lure on. For your first couple of casts, I would recommend some kind of swivel, you know, like a, a snap swivel, swivel snap, whatever you call them. Uh, so that whatever action in the lure isn't gonna, you know, make the, your line tangled more uh, or, you know, curled up more or anything or twisted more or anything like that. So, um, you know, the first couple casts on, on a, on a fresh spool, you, you'll want to, what I like to do is put a really, really heavy lure on there with a swivel and just chunk it as far as you can get as much line in the water as you can. And then as you reel it in that swivel, the line will kind of twist the swivel and, and, it, it tends to just sit back on here a little bit better than fresh off the spool, I think. All right, then there's a little keeper on here. Hopefully you can see this little gray nugget. You just got some big old fat fingers here. Come on guys. You just loop it around the bottom like that. Flip the bail back down. And now this one's ready for the rack. It's ready to head out to the lake, have some fun. That's how you spool it up at home without any fancy tools or accessories. I'm Simon from Lake Hub. Get out on the water. We'll catch you next time.